All right, I'm welcome back from the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Monday, May 2nd, 2022. If you've not done so already, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, etc. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Also, thank you to everybody uh, for helping me get to 1,000 subscribers. You passed that over the weekend. Pretty excited about that. Let's keep it rocking and rolling here. Anyways, so markets in turmoil. Sound the alarms. Uh, if you didn't catch it already, CNBC ran their little special today, and we all know what that means. So over the last hour, we've gotten that nice short covering rally here, and it looks like that is continuing into the close so far. Um, so nice little move off the lows there for the market. One thing that kind of alerted me to, you know, I guess, maybe a, the potential for a reversal or potential for things to not be so bad, I guess, is take a look at ARC here. Arc up almost 5%. If you look on the entry day, this has been green really all day long. Uh, you know, the little micro gap down, one little sell-off bar, and then green all day long. So when you see Arc leading the market higher, things can't be that bad. You know, conditions can't really be that bad where we're going to completely sell off and have this major breakdown. Uh, if you look at the triple Qs, triple Qs have been leading the market all day long. Uh, again, if we flip back over to the intraday here, you can see how the spiders started to make you know, lower lows here around the 12 o'clock, 12 to one o'clock time frame, And the triple Qs really didn't take out double bottom until later. And it really just barely took out double bottom. Whereas, you know, the spiders is in a clear kind of downtrend for hours really, whereas, you know, the triple Qs hadn't made new lows uh, until later in the day. So when I see the NASDAQ leading, the same thing with the semis here, look at the move off the lows with the semis. When I see the semis leading, when I see ARC leading, you know, I see some of these stocks like Zoom uh, up nicely, Netflix up nicely, uh, Facebook having a nice day. So some of the uh, IGV making a nice move today, Tesla, you know, having a nice move as well. When I see those names uh, performing well and outperforming, you know, there's usually nothing wrong. And, and you see the VIX heading up almost to 37 today, now turning red. Uh, it's like, you know, what were we really pricing in here? You know, essentially, it's like we we're hedging to the max for the FOMC and basically hedging for a crisis, right? And I, I just can't imagine that uh, Jerome Powell is going to say anything super hawkish. Now, he can still, you know, the, the consensus is that they're going to raise by 50 basis points, and they probably will do that. But A, that's already priced in. And B, you know, what's he really going to say that's going to spook the market? I mean, the, the, the market's already priced in the worst. The market is priced in the most hawkish Fed imaginable. And so that's kind of the, the, the viewpoint I have going into this is there's so many put buying and so much vol hedging and so on that going into the FOMC, you'd likely you know, think that conditions would be favorable for a short squeeze, which is what we're kind of seeing today here in the last really hour to hour and a half. And we're even getting a nice move up here into the last uh, 10, 15 minutes here. Look at the semis at the highs of the day now. Uh, like I said, ARC is at the highs of the day as well. Tesla at the highs of the day. Uh, triple Q's coming into double top here. Let's take a look at the triple Q's here. And by the way, take a look at this broadening pattern here on the spiders starting to form. So you have this uh, upper band here, higher highs, and then lower lows on the way down here. We got below that channel and that's being defended. Another thing that got defended was guess what? 52 week lows. So we hit 52 week lows today or we're very close to 52 week lows and that got defended today. So very interesting. I know everybody was focused in on gap fill. When, when you have a level that's that obvious, sometimes it sometimes the market makers won't let it quite hit. They'll let it get very close and then you'll get a rally beforehand because there's too many people sitting right here with their orders and they don't want to fill those. So they'd rather basically pull the rug on them and you know move it higher after it gets very close to that level rather than actually touching it. But nice little broadening channel there on the tr on the uh, SPY. On the triple Qs here, so the level I'm watching right now, and we're above that right now. We've got about 10 minutes. We'll check it into the close. But it's 317.45. So that was this pivot low. We closed below it. Never really confirmed. Closed below it Friday. And doesn't look like we're going to confirm it. Now it looks like we're going to close back above it. So um, is it super major? Well, you've already traded through it so many times. No, but it's a good psychological level here for the market. And the old, the old saying is if you're not going to break down, you're going to break out. Or on the other, you know, the other way would be if you're not going to break out, you're going to break down. So 
the longer we chop here and the longer we can't break down, usually, you know, usually that means that the path of least resistance has to be the other way. So maybe this market needs to make another lower high before it can, you know, actually break that level. Uh, either way, there seems to be a lot of uh, fighting going on here and we're getting a good squeeze here into the final 10 minutes now as it is 351 and triple Q's making new highs of the day now, uh, as are the semiconductors. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on those. All right, so let's look at the IWM here. So Russell 2000, nice reversal as well. And it, it defended that tail candle. So we talked about that tail candle there on Thursday. It didn't close below it, and it's getting defended. So again, Russell is weak, but it, it's at least defending that bottoming tail level. So nothing to say it can't necessarily rally here in the short term, especially if we get a lot of short covering uh, into and after the FOMC. Uh, diamond here, take a look at the size of this tail on the diamond. So defending that 326, 325 area, that's your green bar low. That's where you reversed. You came back and back tested this area. So that's generally going to be support, especially when you're oversold going into it and you're getting a nice reversal there with good volume there on the diamond there. So good volume on the diamond and a massive tail candle there on the daily semiconductors so let's talk about this so we've been following this wedge pattern for the last week or so and went up to it uh last week last thursday bounced off of it and now potentially making a higher low we'll see if this can break out if this can this will cause some type of a squeeze over the next couple of weeks uh in tech and in the broad market in general that is generally what happens here you get the semiconductors to lead the rest of the market's generally going to follow but i like this falling wedge pattern here going into the fomc as far as igv is concerned uh, again same kind of deal double bottoms being defended and again if this rallies and the semis rally the igv will rally um, but nice little reversal there that is at the highs of the day as well dow transports so back testing that 14.5 area so came down here put it in a little tail chopped around, couldn't get above 14.5, 14.6. Then you broke out and now you're back testing it. Nice tail candle there for the transports. So it is reversing and potentially putting in a higher low. So it's gonna have to confirm that by making a higher high, but a nice little uh, tail candle there uh, for the Dow transports. 10 year, so right on schedule here, got up to 2.996. And I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, it probably needs to go up there and pierce 3%. That would likely cause some type of a, uh, I think a psychological level that needs to get pierced uh, going into the FOMC, some type of a blow off move there in the 10 year. We'll see what we get. 30 year is well above that now at 3061 uh, here. So maybe this gets up to 3.1. We'll see. Uh, but overall, I think going into the Fed, these are just, they're priced for absolute perfection. And uh, I think there's probably going to be some type of reversal here. Uh, at least a good a good tradable reversal uh, over the next week or so in uh, rates. HYG, I told you guys it would have to go to 78. We got right there. And then a nice little tail candle, possible bottoming tail there for HYG. So we'll see if we get follow through tomorrow on that. As far as home builders, XHB, ITB. Also, you know, nice reversal today, but very weak. You know, look at this, look at this weekly pattern. I do not like this weekly pattern here uh, for the ITB or the XHB. Continue to monitor that moving forward. VNQ, look at the collapse on this. Heavy volume too, but, um, you know, as soon as it couldn't hold this area, it just broke right down and went right to this green bar low. That's where you reverse. It's getting a bit off of that, but what a monumental collapse in the VNQ. We'll continue to watch that one uh, in the coming days here. So let's look at, uh, let's go over to financials here. So XLF, so I drew this trend line in last week and I told you guys we're probably gonna have to go down there. Look at these divergent lows getting made. A lot of support at the 34 handle, you know, with this trend line and also this kind of chop area. So that is generally gonna be support and we're getting a little bit of a bid here off of the lows in the XLF, still down about 10 basis points. Uh, so basically flattish, uh, not green yet, but a nice little reversal there potentially. We'll need to see follow through a close above this green or a red bar high is 35.69. So close daily close above 35.69 would probably confirm this as a good short term low here for the XLF. But nice little trend line there, uh, diverging lows. Same thing with the broker dealers. So watching this potential big falling wedge pattern here again that 400 handle very close got really close to it uh, and it is coming off the low so we'll see what we get tomorrow. But financials uh, are looking to are looking like they're been able to hold up a little bit just like 
a lot of things today. Anyways, crude. So it did sell off a little bit on the OPEC news earlier about their um, looking to increase production a bit. Uh, it's on schedule for this summer, but it did reverse nicely. So impressive reversal here for crude. Got a nice kind of hammer candle inside of this green bar. So nothing really wrong there when you see that with crude. Uh, ultimately, it's still got to get above, you know, this pivot here and this pivot, and then you could have higher highs and kind of negate this little lower highs pattern. But we'll see what we get out here tomorrow. We'll have to see what kind of pattern we get, if there's follow through or if it comes back down. Uh, overall, though, still kind of lower highs here on crude. So we'll continue to monitor that. But uh, a nice little reversal today for sure. Um, XLE, same kind of thing. You know, nothing's really changed here. We're just chopping around that that 50 moving average. XOP, same kind of deal. OIH, below the 50 moving average. So this does look like bearish chop to me on the energy names. And again, I think they're in corrective mode. They've been so overbought for such a long time that, you know, then they finally broke down. Now it looks like they're putting in bearish consolidation. Uh, at least that's the way I'm reading it here. So OIH would probably head back to you know, at least that 240 area, you know, that's where you broke out from. Uh, XOP, I'd be looking at, you know, basically the 115 handle. And XLE, you're going to be looking for about, you know, I mean, you're, you basically got very close to 70 already, but, you know, 67.50, maybe 65. Um, and it's got a lot of, you know, real estate below that if it can, if it breaks through that. But either way, um, it does look like they are putting in some type of bearish chop here. Anyways, net gas making a bit of a higher high so we'll see if it can get we'll see if it can challenge eight bucks again i'm very interested in this one so we we did short this with kold a few weeks ago and we made some nice money on that was really looking to get in uh on the long side and, and double dip it but it just never really gave us that opportunity it just took off very quickly uh last monday before i had a chance to really get into it but we'll see if it can start to make a higher high here um it would be a very similar setup to the one we got in September. So move up, down into the 20, up higher high, and then you kind of just try to make one more higher high, and then it corrected. So we'll see if we can get some type of pattern here, but this one is definitely on my radar. Uh, dollar index, again, I said over the weekend, this needs to have follow through to the downside, and, and it's been strong. So dollar index is holding up really well. Even when we had that serious squeeze uh, in uh, March, you know, the dollar really just kind of went sideways. So maybe we'll see the same a similar type of a scenario here uh, going into the Fed and the FOMC as back in March. Anyways, gold uh, continuing lower here. So gold getting hit pretty hard, losing that 100 moving average down to basically the 1850 area. This probably wants to touch that 200. Uh, so precious metals are on the weaker side. Look at how beaten down silver is. Um, this is way, way short term oversold here, but a pretty monumental collapse there on silver. Again, printing a bit of a tail candle, so maybe you can rally back up. So the 2350, 2375 area. Um, and then I think it's going to have a little bit of trouble there moving forward. Platinum and palladium uh, both just kind of sideways to lower today. So nothing too uh, spectacular going on there. And copper, told you guys, you know, I didn't like this bearish chop at that 200. And a nice break, <coughs> excuse me, breakdown bar today on copper. But look where they defended it, right at that green bar low. So that's where it stalled out. Um, and we'll see if it can hold that. If you close below that, on a weekly basis, uh, copper will go a lot lower very quickly. So bear that in mind. All right, market's about to close here. So let's talk about Bitcoin really quick, and then we'll cover the markets here. So Bitcoin basically, uh, it, you know, it's not doing a whole lot here. Still inside of this red bar. Uh, same thing with Ether. Not really, you know, a whole lot going on. Just a little bit of a doji candlestick today. Again, we've been talking about this trend line here on, there's the closing bell right there. We've been talking about this, um, you know, this trend line here on Ether. It did break over the weekend. Then it, then it kind of reclaimed it. So we'll see if that ended up being a fake breakdown. Uh, and we'll see if we can get follow through again. You really need to get above this red bar high here on Ether to do anything spectacular. And then again, that 3036 handle uh, is kind of the bigger level. The same thing on Bitcoin here. You need to make a higher high and uh, eventually you're going to have to get above this red bar high. Otherwise, I'm not too excited about anything that the coins are doing, but um, really kind of a quiet day, all things considered here uh, in the crypto space, you know, especially considering uh, what the SPY did. Look at the, the rally here in the last 10 minutes on the spiders. So let's, um, let's take a look here again. So 52 week lows got defended. And spiders and the triple Qs closed right at the highs of the day. Uh, IWM closing not too far off the highs. Dow a little bit far, a little bit farther off the highs. But um, nice move there for tech. And 
just was very oversold. I like this little broadening pattern here. That looks like it's going to be valid. Um, the, the key here is we've got to get follow through. Okay, so we had a nice rally on Thursday. It was a really good rally. I mean, it was a killer rally. And then uh, Apple's earnings just, you know, we couldn't hold that. We couldn't hold anything. And, um, you know, we reversed on Friday and it just it just completely, you know, crapped the bed into the close. Uh, but we'll see. So we got good volume there on the triple Qs. We finally got some good buy volume. So that is that is encouraging. Let's take a look at the spiders volume here. Yeah. So this may, you know, we need to see follow through, but that's a good that's a good low there. And I like the volume. I like the volume there on the spiders. And I, we talked about the volume on the diamond as well. Yeah, nice little surge there. So look at the Russell. Russell, not so much, but definitely the spiders and the cues. So there may be this may be a legitimate like a legitimate low here that we put in and possibly we can squeeze up now. Um, I like that volume confirmation. Anyways, again, we need to see follow through. We need to see a really good rally tomorrow. Um, doesn't have to close above this red bar high tomorrow, but you want to see good follow through with good volume. And I mean, this is all short covering, right? This is all short covering where, you know, it, it's. I'm not trying to say it isn't, but that's how rallies start. That's how every rally starts is with short covering. But anyways, follow through tomorrow. 52-week lows defended. Those are the big takeaways. Anyways, guys, come find me on carnivoretrades.com. Give the video a like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I'll talk to you all tomorrow.